What do Blogatog, Diet Mountain Dew, and an urge to procrastinate for my classes have in common? It would be a lot harder to make videos for this channel without them. For over a decade, head designer Mark Rosewater's blog has answered questions about the behind the scenes of magic almost daily, providing an uncommon amount of insight into the inner workings of the game. In this time, tens of thousands of questions have been asked and answered, from the obvious to the extremely niche, and everything in between. Through this, various running gags and trends have emerged, such as Mark's hatred of bananas, or the fact that 9 out of 10 people with Phyrexian usernames should be ignored for your own mental health. But perhaps the most famous meme to come out of Blogatog is the legendary maybe with a smiley face. The response is generally used to provide acknowledgement to a question that cannot yet publicly be answered. Its meaning has been a matter of debate, with some reading it as leaning positive, or others see it as truly neutral or meaningless. Over the years, multiple users have asked Mark what the ratio of maybes being true or false is, but he states that not even he knows. No one knows, until now. I present to you a thoroughly overcomplex analysis of the Mark Rosewater maybe. Unfortunately, Tumblr's search function is awful, as it just stops showing results after a few pages. On the other end of the spectrum, using Google with specific search parameters still gives me way too many results. I ended up going page by page through Blogatog and command effing the word maybe. Every time I found a relevant page, I saved it to a spreadsheet. Then I went through all those articles and noted the category they went in. I ended up saving and reviewing about a thousand articles. This took a really long time. To make this venture slightly more worthwhile, please consider helping me out by subscribing, commenting, and sharing. Thank you. Before I go through the results, I give a disclaimer that this only pertains to the maybes found on Blogatog. In addition to his blog, Mark has a Twitter account, a podcast, an article series, and a nature documentary. I chose not to examine any maybes potentially found in those mediums, as going through Blogatog was time consuming enough, and the vast majority of maybes can be found there anyway. I'm also only looking at the maybe with a smiley face, not just any time Mark uses the word maybe in any context. Before we get to the maybes he gave, let's talk about the maybes he didn't. People have asked for a maybe and not gotten one 145 times. Note that very few people go to the trouble of typing out the smiley face, but it's clear from context what they mean when they phrase it as a maybe, or more obviously, a famous or trademark maybe. I had organized the 145 non-maybe responses into three categories, positive, negative, and other. Positive refers to answers that indicate a fair likelihood of the thing happening, or not right confirmation, or Mark pointing out that it already happened. Negative refers to responses indicating something is unlikely to happen, or a straight-up projection. I also put the maybe that Mark occasionally gives in this category, as it is defined as especially unlikely. Notably, asks that he gave a negative response can still end up happening. For example, he responded that a Phyrexian creature type update would be problematic, but we eventually got one anyway. Other refers to instances where the likelihood can't be ascertained from the response. Mark doesn't understand the submission, or Mark just doesn't respond to the maybe part of the question. Why does no one pay attention to the one question per post request? Of these 145 responses, 47, or 32%, are positive, 68, or 47% are negative, and 30, or 21% go in other. Now onto the main attraction. I devised three categories to sort these maybes into. Yes, no, and unknown. Yes maybes came true. No maybes, within the parameters set by the question, did not, and unknown maybes are still up in the air. For questions asked if something would happen in the future, without any additional qualifiers, I considered it coming true at any point to be a yes. That does leave the possibility that wizards had no plans for it at the time of the ask, but decided to at some point later on. I have no way of knowing when these decisions were made, so I chose to leave it open-ended. If the ask specified soon or the near future, I kept it at two years from the date of the post, for consistency's sake. If the question specified a specific time span, I obviously used it. Some of the category results have decimals because a handful of asks gave two distinct questions and Mark gave no indication that he was responding to one in particular. I do not consider playtest cards to satisfy asks since they aren't legal anywhere. I only considered several border cards if the ask was specifically about them. I also omitted comedic questions since it didn't seem right for the statistics to include will the next set have cards or where you kill magic type asks. I also didn't include questions completely separated from Mark. For example, Mark would have no way of knowing if some random Marvel employee was a Magic fan. In total, there were 85 posts that dismissed for these reasons. Additionally, there were 18 questions about the nature of maybes, some of which received a maybe in response, that I omitted for similar reasons. Finally, I covered maybes given up to October 17th. By my count, given these qualifiers, Mark has given 741 maybes. Of these, 468, or 62%, were asked for, while 273, or 38%, were not. Now, on to the results. 
229.5, or 31%, are unknown. 136, or 18%, are noes. 375.5, or 51%, are yeses. The yeses have a slight majority and a strong plurality. We finally know. I wouldn't necessarily read too much into this, though. Unless an unknown maybe has a time limit or is about a specific set, it's difficult for it to become a no. On the other hand, there's always a possibility that an unknown maybe will become a yes one day. That said, when combined with the non-maybe results, it's possible that Mark is more likely to reject something that isn't true to give a maybe to something that is. I expect my Quandrix acceptance letter to arrive any day now. I'd also like to give some shoutouts to impressively accurate predictions made over the years. As Miranda Martin who dazed in a cold car. Would fit as a card name if it didn't have a mana cost. Multiple people predicted that Unstable would have an Urza's head planeswalker. The Egyptian ward did have mummies in the form of white zombies. Semi-randomized playable decks may be very hard to do, but we got them anyway. And perhaps most impressively of all, the user who predicted when Landwalk would be publicly retired to the very day. A lot of very much wrong predictions too though. No Phyrexians or Slivers or Merit Lage on Innistrad so far. I'd also like to give the official Most Maybe About Across the Years award to Dwarves. There have been 21 maybe requests for Dwarf Tribal Support, or a Dwarf Planeswalker, or even just some more Dwarf cards. This is far more than any other creature type, or even any other concept, save one. The one concept that performed Dwarves was 2018's Dominaria, which generated 27 maybe asks. Note that the average standard set gets under 10. The Modern Horizon sets fared better, getting an average of 18 between them. A set with the potential for returning characters and other callbacks and deep pulls clearly generates the most asks. Crops of asks on the same topic tend to arise when there is a big reveal. The publication of a set's name and description is the most common instance of this, but there are also a fair number of questions about the seven year plan after it received an update. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, let me know, and maybe I'll do a sequel on when ifs. As said though, this was very time consuming, so please show your support if that's something you would like. Thanks again and have a great day.